Good evening, and a warm welcome to Merciful Redeemer Parish. Over the past three days, we have accompanied our Lord in his Paschal mystery by joining the Last Supper and his passion and death on the cross. And tonight we have gathered for the Easter Vigil, the holiest of nights and the vigils of vigils to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. And so I kindly invite you all to join us outside for the procession as we begin our liturgy by, with the lighting of the Easter flame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep memorial with the Lord on his solemnity in the world, and celebrating his and we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph, triumph over death with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor. And
It's yesterday, today. The beginning and the end. The alpha and omega. All time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, Deacon Bruno, get it right in there. Go ahead. I can try lighting with this. Here we go. It's going to be easier. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound the loud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you let our forebears Israel's children from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world set Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death 
and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 
Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Amen. I would invite you to please extinguish your candles. We will need them later in the liturgy and be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, 
and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of all the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariot and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who is going before the Israelite Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Israel and the army It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the children of Israel for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the children of Israel 
walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went, off, went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. stand. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remained undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sit. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. When the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was unclean. 
So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name. And it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I shall cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i
stand. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self 
was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. 
as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Many people think that Christianity is all about man's search for God. I mean, you've heard that before. But you know, although it sounds pretty convincing, nothing could be further from the truth. You see, Christianity is all about God's search for us. All the readings from the Bible we just heard this evening tell us this. And that shouldn't surprise us because, as I've said before, the, the Bible is uh, like a, a beautiful love story. It's, it's a love letter that God sends to us. It is a beautiful love letter, probably the longest love letter in history. And that makes sense because God wants us to know how much he loves us. He's got a lot to say on that matter. So the Bible is a very long love letter from God to us. And he shows us his love in so many ways. He shows us his love by creating the universe. We heard about that in the book of Genesis. He creates the universe. Existence itself is a gift. To just exist is a gift. But he does, doesn't just create things. He creates us. He creates you and me. He creates human beings that we might know him. So God's intentional in his creation. He has a plan for us. That's very powerful. Pope, uh, Pope Benedict, when, at his very first homily when he was alive, said the following, We are not some casual and meaningless product of evolution. Each of us is the result of a thought of God. Each of us is loved. Each of us is willed. Each of us is necessary. There's nothing more beautiful than to be surprised by the gospel, by the encounter with Christ. There's nothing more beautiful than to know him and to speak to, other, speak to others about our friendship with him. Not only does God want us to know him, he cares for us. He's active in our lives. He's active in our lives. The children of Israel were in bondage. And we know that in bondage in Egypt. They never chose to be born in bondage, but they found themselves in bondage just by their being born in Egypt. But they, they, God heard their cry. And he sent them Moses. And as we heard in our second reading that Patricia read so well, he leads the people of Israel across the Red Sea, through the Red Sea, from captivity with Pharaoh into the promised land. And that's just one small example we heard this evening about his love for Israel. Over and over he comes to his people's aid, even when they let God down and disobey him and ignore him and even disrespect him. 
by committing spiritual adultery, giving their hearts over to other gods. God still cares for them. And the good news continues. He cares for us too. His deeds are not just deeds that are done in the past. We're not just reciting a bunch of deeds done in the past here. But God continues to care for us. And we see that here this evening. You know, the sin of Adam marks us all. This sin called original sin. Just as those people in Egypt never chose to be born in captivity, so too, through this original sin, we are born captive to sin, as well as our personal sinful choices adding to that. But then, through baptism, here's the key. That's when we individually went through the waters. Just as Israel as a nation went through the Red Sea, so too we go through the waters from slavery to sin to newness of life, from captivity with the devil to new life in Christ. And traditionally, this is the night, the beautiful Easter vigil, when adults are baptized and when people are received into full communion with the church. It is very, very beautiful. And tonight, not only are the people here who are going to receive baptism, our catechumenate, going to make their confession of faith and renouncing the devil, but we're going to do that too. And as I explained to them in the RCA program, there was something very special done in the early church. As you know, when you're being baptized, you're asked, do you renounce Satan? And you say, I do. And all his, and all his works, I do. And all his empty promises, I do. Powerful, right? But in the early church, they did more than that. In the early church, when they were being baptized, they faced the east. So they faced that direction there. And so they would be facing in the direction of the priest. And the priest would say, do you reject Satan? They would say, I do. And then they'd turn into the west and spit. You're lucky our roles aren't reversed, right? <laughs> right in Satan's face. And all his empty promises, I do. Hak tui. And all his works, I do. Hak tui. And that's beautiful in some strange way. Because what it means is it truly shows what's happening in baptism. We are turning our back on the devil, on sin, on all of the seductions of sin, so that we can say yes to Jesus, and yes to virtue, and yes to a life of grace. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our hope. We should never forget that. Marie and Pierre uh, Curie were two of the most brilliant scientists in the early modern period. In 19, you know their names probably if you studied any science. In 1903, they received the Nobel Peace Prize in physics for their groundbreaking work on radioactivity. It was in 1903. Both of them get the Nobel Peace Prize in physics. Very impressive that a husband and wife would do that. And then in 1906, unfortunately, Pierre died. He died tragically in an unexpected street accident. Marie was absolutely wild with grief. And every day, she would open up her diary and write a message. And the message that she, was, she wrote was to her departed husband, Pierre. I'd like to read to you one of the entries that Marie Curie made in her diary. As she's writing this, she's writing this to her husband. Your coffin was closed, and I could see you no more. They came to get you, a sad company. We saw you go down into the deep hole. Then the dreadful procession of people that wanted to take us away. Jack and I resisted. We wanted to see everything to the end. They filled the grave 
and put flowers on it. Everything is over. Pierre is sleeping in the last sleep beneath the earth. It is the end of everything. 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 No, science as such does not have the answer. The answer must come from the other side, God's side. It comes from the life and lips of the man of Galilee. Into the darkness of death he brings light. Into the midst of our doubts he comes with his voice of promise. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. We are blessed with a, a greater wisdom than the science of this world. Jesus is our hope. This is because he is the only one who has risen from the grave, body and soul. That's why everyone's astonished in the New Testament when they go to the grave. Astonished that he's not there. And not only this, the beautiful thing is that Jesus invites us to share in his life, in his resurrected life, promising us eternal life for one simple reason. Because God loves us. When we were baptized... It was like passing through those waters of the Red Sea. And on the other side, we became the brothers and sisters of Christ. We became heirs of God. Let that sink in. We became heirs of God through our baptism. And so will people this evening. Think of that dignity. It's a dignity that nothing can ever extinguish. And Jesus invites us to share in his life, to turn away from sin, which at the end of the day while maybe making us experience some pleasure, leaves us feeling empty and tired. To leave, turn away from sin, and rise to a life of grace with him. A life of service, a life of forgiveness, a life of loving others, a life of finding his image in them a life close to him, a life of freedom that comes from knowing that I am loved unconditionally. I once heard it said like this, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Isn't that beautiful? Let that sink in. Because we always, got, we always think got to earn God's love, right? God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Yet, he desires a response from us. Love given craves another love to be received. He wants us to turn from darkness and to turn to his light, allowing him to set us free from whatever it is. Addiction, jealousy, unforgiveness, fear, resentment, the things that enslave us and oppress us. And he gives us tools. He gives us, he gives us graces for the journey. And that is living the sacraments. Receiving him in holy communion each week. Going to the sacrament of confession regularly. And praying each day. Prayer is conversation with God. God says, I want you to be in relationship with me. And that should really make us feel special. And we should desire to be in relationship with him. And prayer is when we speak with him. There's a, an Icelandic saga that was written 1,000 years ago. And in that saga, um, the bard who is singing says, the pathway between the door of my friend and my own door is overgrown quickly unless it is used frequently. Cool, right? Unless we visit God in prayer, that pathway, 
that connection will be overgrown by all kinds of things that we don't want. All we got to do is follow him, stay close to him, and breathe in the fresh air of his grace that he bestows upon us. To, to live in his light and to turn our back on darkness. And to never forget the simple fact, a fact that obviously Marie Curie uh, knew very well that Jesus is our hope. With joy, we invite the elect, those chosen for the sacraments of initiation to come forward when called with their sponsor. Adriana Fifich and her sponsor, Angie Alvarez. Gia Lu and her sponsor, Joji Escuban. Jing Ma and her sponsor, Tracy Chan. Joyce Lee, and her sponsor, Rose Hassanali. Savannah Davis, and her sponsor, Louisa Florentin. Shanika Pradana, and her sponsor, Michelle D'Souza. Shelly Shuangxi and her sponsor Lisa Tang. Stuthi Shetty and her sponsor Sasha Montero. Yan Wang and her sponsor Karen Tan. Yilin Li and her sponsor, Ruth Ferreira. Navia Madagonda, and her sponsor, Karen Nerona. Karthik Chinthalapudi, and his sponsor, Terence Nerona. Shelby Mellon, and her sponsor, Zofia Broniak. Luciano Rodriguez and his sponsor, Spencer Turnbull. Abel Chakwuma and his sponsor, Philip Uday. Daniel Bagheri and his sponsor, Christian Kusevich. Joseph Napolitano and his sponsor, Romel Camacho. Kyle Nagamatsu, and his sponsor, Lionel and Tail. Daniel Chan, and his sponsor, Tony Pereira. And last but not least, Yong Bo Fu, and his sponsor, Robert Shea. Dear friends, let us pray to Almighty God for our brothers and sisters who are asking for baptism. He has called them and brought them to this moment. May he grant them light and strength to follow Christ with resolute hearts and to profess the faith of the Church. 
May he give them the new life of the Holy Spirit, whom we are about to call down upon this water.
we will now have our blessing of the holy water, which will be used in our baptism this evening. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give to us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of holiness. The waters of the great flood you made a sign of the waters of baptism that made an end to sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sins by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for it the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water the grace of your Son so that in the sacrament of baptism, all those whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to a new life of innocence and rebirth by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send your Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the depths of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My dear catechumenate, I will now ask you to renounce sin. Do you reject Satan? I do. We'll have to do better than that. <laughs> Satan is the lord of darkness, prince of evil. He is, he is wicked beyond all telling. We definitely don't want him to be part of our life. I know you know that. So I ask you again, do you reject Satan? and all his works, I do. and all his empty promises. I do. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now I will anoint the hands of all of our catechumens.
Dear Catechumen, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? We will now begin our baptism. Adriana, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Receive the light of Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. Jing, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. Joyce, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. Savannah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Shanika, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive 
receive the light of Christ. Shelley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Stuthi, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Again, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yilin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Navya, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. Karthik, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Shelby, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Luciano, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Daniel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Kyle, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Daniel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. Yongbo, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the light of Christ. I would invite everyone who is in the church to please stand. We have heard our catechumens profess their faith and renounce sin. So now I invite you to do the same. It reminds us of your own promises of baptism, which either you made or your godparents and parents made on your behalf. After we have our, our this um, re renunciation of sin and the confession of the creed, I'll go through the church sprinkling with holy water, and it reminds us of our own baptism, it reminds us of how we have died to sin to be alive to Christ. And let us not take that for granted. Let us really enjoy that moment this evening and honor it, just as all of these people who've received the sacraments, it's so special for them, let our baptism be special to us too. And so, in God's presence, I ask you the following questions, as I did the catechumens. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ, in Christ Jesus.
Members of our Christian community have also come seeking to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. With joy, the Church calls the candidates to come forward with their sponsor, Andrea Wenzel, and her sponsor, Flo Pianta. Crystal C. Persad and her sponsor, Annette Fernandez. Feruze Javan and her sponsor, Therese Morcos. LaFancia Evans and her sponsor, Primrose Lewis. Nineka Jesusemi and her sponsor, Rachel Andrade. Shinhei Kachikaro and her sponsor, Nanette Santa Cruz. Tyler Alley and his sponsor, Alphonse Choi. We also invite members of our Catholic faith who seek to complete their initiation through confirmation in Eucharist to come forward with their sponsor when called. Alexi Morales and her sponsor, Leanne Camacho. Christopher Moody and his sponsor, Wilhelmina Moody. Josefina Lopez and her sponsor, Sandra Dessa. Ricardo Huarta and his sponsor, Juan Hernandez. Nikolai Crystal and his sponsor, Gabriel Gurusami. Raquel Insili and her sponsor, Joey Kamek. Taylor Costa and her sponsor, Michelle D'Souza. And last but not least, Mark Hermes and his sponsor, Gary D'Souza. As our neophytes return, you may extinguish your candles.
My dear newly baptized, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them to their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering and death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these newly baptized to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. Let us all pray for them in silence, asking God's blessings and strength for them. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of ju right judgment and courage, a spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And now we'll anoint each of you with the holy chrism on your foreheads. Adriana, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Gia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jean. Jean, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joyce, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Shanika, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Savannah, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Shelley, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Stati, Stati, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Yen, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Yilin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Perfect. Navia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good. Karithik, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And with your Peace spirit. be with you. And with your spirit. Okay. Shelby, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Luciano, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Abel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Daniel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good. Kyle, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Daniel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Yungbo, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mark, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Taylor, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Raquel. Raquel. 
Raquel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Nikolai, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Ricardo, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Josefina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Alexi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Tyler, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Shining, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Neka. Neka. Neka, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Francia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Fierose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Crystal, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Andrea, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. I'm very proud of all of these men and women who have entered into our faith, into full communion through baptism, through confirmation, and it's a very beautiful reality. And um, I think that we can all be extremely proud of them. Let's pray for them. Never forget to keep them all in your prayers so that they will be holy men and women who will always put God first in their lives and they can continue this beautiful sacred trajectory of moving away from darkness into light toward Jesus Christ, the true answer to everything, our hope. And I think it's wonderful if we can appreciate them. That the power of the resurrection fill the church, empowering each Christian to spread the good news of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those baptized and received into the one body of Christ and confirmed in the spirit of the risen Christ, that they may grow in true faith as we welcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have dedicated their lives to God, that they may look for the things that are in heaven and be witnesses of Christ in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of God gathered here in Easter joy, that we may bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for those who are sick and have died recently. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now take a moment to offer our own personal petitions to the Lord in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead as he promised us. In peace and joy, we present our prayers to you 
through the same risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as our catechumens uh, return to their places.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Francis our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic, and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph's spouse, your blessed apostles, the martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Bill, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysostomus, John, Paul, Cosmos, Ramian, and all your saints, we ask that uh, through their merits and prayers, 
in all things may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servant, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon to Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. I want to say the word, and my soul shall be filled.
Let us pray. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. I thank our ushers for taking up our second Easter collection. So I thank you for that, dear ushers. And um, at every Easter and Christmas, I just want to thank a few people who make Merciful Redeemer so special and make it um, function so well. So as the ushers are taking up our second collection, I want to first of all thank um, our associate pastor, uh, Father Egans. As I always say, he's, he's the good looking one, so it's great. But don't, but don't feel too bad, we got Father Edmund, he's the smart one. So they're a great combination. They give me a lot of support. If I ask them to do anything, they immediately try to carry out to the best of their abilities, which is wonderful. I thank Deacon Bruno and his wife, Tina. Deacon Bruno is always so great. Every time I ask him to do something, he's more than happy to assist me. So I'm very grateful. Deacons really serve the church wonderfully. I'm also blessed by probably having the best seminarian in the seminary with us this year, Alphonse Troy. So. I'm glad, I'm glad he stood up and bowed. It just means we can work on his humility now, too. So <laughs> it's very, God bless you, Alphonse. I also want to thank Jane and her wonderful team. They worked so hard to make sure that we would have a beautiful Easter vigil. Along with uh, Jane, we have Elizabeth, and we have Raina, and we have Ray. They all worked very hard. And you think about it, ever since, um, they've been working ever since the beginning of October all the way till now. And so all the preparation that our wonderful now neophytes have received has come from them. So thank you, Jane, and thank you, everybody. I want to thank our office manager, Patricia. She's so great, and um, I'll be honest with you, she's one of the hardest workers I've ever met in my life. 
I want to thank Elizabeth too, because Elizabeth is also a very beautiful addition to our office. Also one of the hardest workers I have. I can say this about everyone. I'm so blessed to be pastor of Merciful, including the next person, Flavia, our part-time receptionist. So she works very hard. Danielle, our youth coordinator, who is here this evening. Uh, Danny, our custodian, he keeps everything so nice and clean, so I'm grateful to him. I'm grateful to Keelan and Communications. <laughs> Janet, our indefatigable sacristan, so she's amazing. I want to thank our, our servers, did such a good job tonight. Excellent job, gentlemen. So. as well as our incomparable lectors and our ushers too, so thank you very much. It's good news, it's going in the pocket, right? So I also want to thank um, all of our volunteers. You know, I just mentioned some of the volunteers that, that really get noticed a lot, but if you just look at our bulletin or our website, you can see how many people are helping to make Merciful Redeemer such a beautiful and profoundly anointed parish. I'm grateful to each and every one of you for all of the work you do. You know who you are. You don't need a shout out from me or applause from anybody because you already know that your reward is gonna be great in heaven and also a great reward here on earth with the peace of serving other people. So it's really, really wonderful. Um, so, and, the, and finally, I just wanna thank all the parishioners of Merciful Redeemer. Um, you are all a very much a blessing uh, to me and I'm very grateful that God has, for one reason or the other, placed me in this parish to be with you. So I'm just very, um, every day, I just give thanks to God for the gift that you are uh, to all of me. So thank you very much for that. And now, okay. <laughs> Clap for yourselves. There you go, it's good. You deserve it. Let us stand for our final blessing. You're good for double hallelujah. Oh, and our amazing choir, too. <laughs> if I had forgotten them, I would have been the first Canadian martyr in 500 years. <laughs> the Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>